and welcome to Build. I am Rihanna Dillon and as ever we are live from London. Today I am delighted to be joined by the cast of World on Fire, an epic new BBC drama following three young people in the eye of the storm as World War II explodes around them. Please welcome Jonah Howard King, Julia Brown, Yissa Daly Ward and Zofia Vigwatch. Hi, thank you so much for joining us. Take a seat. Everyone. Hello. How's it going? Hello. <laughs> Feel good? good? Yeah. Excellent. Um, remember, if you're watching live, then tweet your questions for the cast of World on Fire at Build Series LDN. LDN, or leave a comment under the video if you're watching on Facebook. Guys, congratulations. It was out last night, the first episode. What was wow. that like for you all? Yeah, super exciting. Yes. Scary. Yeah. Over a year it? in the making. Did you watch it with your families? Who was there? Did you have a little screening? I watched it with Julia, Did a lot you? of Julia's friends, yeah. Cute. We, we, we had went, dinner. We had yeah. dinner with uh, our director. One of, yeah, with one of the directors, and, <laughs> and Leslie came, and it was quite, oh, yeah, it was nice. So cute. Yeah. Um, so, who is the best one for telling us a little bit about this series, setting it up, telling us what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Look <laughs> 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 at me. Well, okay. This they've like yeah, okay. Um, set up, yeah. Yeah. So it is set a few months before the outbreak of the war and the Second World War. And uh, Pete Bowker, basically our writer, wanted to uh, tell a, a story about this time in history. Um, but he wanted to tell it from the perspective of uh, through a lot of different lenses. Um, he wanted to tell it through the eyes of women, through the eyes of different nationalities and different sexualities and classes, and tell a time in history that we know very well, but kind of revisit it and, and give it proper representation and um, look at it in a really well-rounded, uh, hopefully dramatically compelling way. Yeah, mass it is massively, it's beautiful. Um, have you been pleased with the reactions so far? Because they've all been incredible. Yeah, we've yeah. been really lucky. We've had lots of lovely reviews in newspapers and magazines and the reaction on Twitter was really good. We were trending on Sunday night, so that was exciting. <laughs> That's really fun. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> trending on Twitter. No, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so Jonah, let's go back to you. The series the series sort of hinges around your character, Harry. So tell us a bit more about the, the romantic predicament that he finds himself in. Yeah, so I play Harry Chase. He's a young guy from Manchester and he's sent to war saw mm -hmm. at the beginning, just before the beginning of the war, to work as a translator in the British Embassy. And a massive part of his storyline is, is this love triangle that he finds himself in between uh, Lois, who, who Julia plays, and, and Kasia, who Zofia plays. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, a, it's an interesting one because he's, he, he finds himself genuinely in love with two people, yeah. which is uh, not something that I've ever experienced. <laughs> and I think it probably <laughs> brings around quite a lot of difficult scenarios as we see in the series uh but it's um that yeah i guess th those three i suppose are the um in a, in a way are the through line for the series and our yeah. way into the story um and julie we see you singing so beautifully in episode one so how did Thank your you. character get involved with ensa and entertaining the troops um, so Lois is working class Manchester girl who before prior to the war she's mainly been looking after her home and her dad suffering from PTSD and her brother who gets in a lot of trouble but um, when the war begins it kind of opens up new opportunities for her. She's able to go and join ENSA which was the entertainment corps um, for the troops during World War II with her best friend Connie. Mm -hmm. So they have um, a kind of two-piece act before the war which is actually based on Peter Biker's writer's the writer's grandmother and her be her best friend called Anna, and they had um, a, a two-piece duet. And then when the war began um, in the story, they, they form a band, the Victory Vs, and they get to travel and leave Manchester for the first time. Wow. So, yes, sir, tell us about Connie, and how much did you know about Ensa before? Not a lot at role? all. I had, like, this vague understanding, but then, of course, on, like, getting the part and knowing what that was, learning about it was massive. Yeah. Uh, just finding out about 
entertainers, um, women, what they were able to do. For the first time, a lot of these women would have been given different chances, and to see that and research that, that was amazing. And uh, Connie, yeah, Connie and Lois are best friends. They have this incredible relationship, obviously, based off real people, so it was such an honour to be able to, to play that. And they're just, they just want to get out of Manchester, see something different, <laughs> and the war gives them the opportunity to do that and do their bit for the war effort. Was that quite surprising that it was kind of of putting a quite positive spin on for these young women that they're actually getting opportunities through wartime. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's like a prism, isn't it? You see it one way and we're, we're taught it one way. Mm -hmm. But there are so many ways in which for a lot of people, the war meant like upward movement and new yeah. opportunities. And Zofia, Harry provides Kasia with an exit strategy to get out of harm's way, but she's really reluctant to leave her family. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, well, so sh we, we meet Kasia when she's uh, in love with uh, Harry and they're in, in Warsaw. You know, she's in this really good place in her life because she has her loving boyfriend and loving family. But then the war starts and uh, very soon she will you know, face the, the cruelty of it and her family will, will face the cruelty of it. So Kasia has to make uh, uh, some big decisions very soon. And, and even in the first episode, we see her, you know, uh, choosing between her family and her love. So mm -hmm. so it's, yeah, it was uh, an amazing story to tell, like to, to play. <laughs> the production design and the aesthetic of this series is so amazing. Like every shot feels incredibly artistic. So tell me about like the amazing costumes and the sets. How Behind did me, so you could completely yeah. just go in and get on with life as it would be in a normal home. And yeah, made the job very easy. Yeah, I bet. And what just surprised me and what I loved so much about this was that gender, race, sexuality are all represented, like you were saying, to a much greater extent um, than we're used to seeing in World War II dramas, kind of, anyway. So was that a major draw for you from the script? Yeah, definitely. I think, like, it, it felt, a journalist said the other day that it was, it felt like a very woke telling of the war and I sort of <laughs> took issue with that. Woke. They, they called it the, the well, second woke war. And I, I think it was a really <laughs> bad way of describing it because actually I think this is just a much, this is a, a, a much more real, much more truthful yeah. way of telling it. I mean, representation and different voices are important in every single story, um, but particularly at a time when everyone is affected. And as we know, this was a time that we were all connected, whoever you were, whatever, whatever your background, background was um, and we were all affected they were all affected in in different but equal ways and so I just think it's a Pete has done a beautiful job not in a kind of tokenistic um, woke way I think yeah. he's just doing it in the way as it, as it should be done that what I loved as well was that you even managed to get in like a sort of multi-racial um, gay storyline in, again like incredibly naturally it just felt very very real can you tell us a little bit about that I think it's really important, and, and again, like Pete highlights this perfectly, that people have always been the same. Mm. Th these stories have always been happening, and because uh, World on Fire is not just the you know historic retelling, it's like it's talking about real people and the real situations, their hearts, you know, the you know the confusion, the betrayal, everything. Uh, it's it it just shows that it's it's extremely honest and I, I you know all of those things were actually happening. Mm -hmm. And going back to the the music and the songs, what what was your research kind of like for picking out some of your favourites that you got to sing? Um, we were both really for fortunate to work with an amazing guy, Matt Smith, who's a musical director in London. Um, and we were given lots of rehearsal time prior to beginning where we sang lots of different jazz music. Because um, for me, especially, I hadn't really sang any jazz. Mm -hmm. um, so it was good to kind of free up the voice and yeah. find <laughs> Lois and Connie's style. Is it uh, a completely different discipline then? Yeah, definitely. And, and allowing yourself to add decorations and freestyle a bit. And then we would pull it back to tr trying to also get it in the style of the 30s because these songs have been recreated so many times over the years. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to you know, copy a Nina Simone version and then take it out of the era. So it was about playing with it and then bringing it back to mm -hmm. the 30s and creating our own versions which was really fantastic yeah it was a great opportunity it's great to you know work and get to sing as well yeah. it's like really rare yeah yeah and sing so beautifully as well um Zofia tell me about doing the research for your character particularly because obviously we you know there's a lot of stuff in about British wartime but what was it where did you go for for yeah. wartime in Poland. Of course, uh, I really wanted to kind of uh, create Kasia's, like uh, her bubble, you know, her world 
just before the war, actually, I was really looking, you know, for information about Warsaw. How how was it before war? How vivid it was? Like I found it was really special at that time, and you know, in the 30s, and you know, lots of cafes like with uh, comedians, or you know, I, I was thinking like. Where would she take Harry for a date? Or, you know, how we were thinking how they met, how how it all began. And, and, and yeah, so it was really special, the research, you know. Also then after, um, about the war and about the resistance, but uh, especially just before I, w I really wanted to make this very different, uh, you know, at the beginning to make it different because I knew that, you know, the, the moment war starts, everything will change yeah. and it, it, it's going to be a completely different character like she's going to play on a different you know uh yeah levels and 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 she's going to use different uh emotions and and you know uh be in the different situations but f the beginning was really important for me and and research about warsaw before before actually the war yeah did you have a historian on set that you could sort of go and check fact check with i, I think there was a lot of historians on the job that were fact-checking scripts, mm -hmm. costumes, sets, everything. The attention to detail was incredible. But um, for me especially, I worked with an accent coach called Jan Hayden Riles, who, because obviously I'm from Scotland, but to get the 19th, 39 accent correct for a woman at the time living right. in Lancashire um, and I, there was lots of different people we were working with across the board who had really done their research. Um, when making a show like this there must be a need to sort of balance being true to recent history um, with the artistic license to blend events and to create something insanely entertaining. Do you think that this series manages to do both? Yeah I, I hope, well, I hope so, <laughs> um, I wouldn't say but I think you know talking that you're thinking about Pete and how he writes and you see this in all of his shows, whether it's the A word or Marvelous, yeah. it's always, they're always very human, they're always driven by, by, um, by characters and, and intimacy and human relationships and that is important in every story, mm. um, especially when you're telling ones which are, you know, have scale and are epic and um, so I think hopefully people will connect with the series because it is exciting and there is, you know, it is grand and, and there is scale to it, but I think hopefully the way in, the window in will be through getting to know th the characters and, and caring about the characters because we see probably some of ourselves in them. And mm -hmm. I th that's hopefully like, I think of period dramas that I watch and, and like and connect with, it's always when it doesn't feel stuffy, it doesn't feel yeah. like another time. It feels like we can relate to those people mm -hmm. and, um, and properly connect with them. The cast as well, apart from you guys, is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You've got Helen Hunt to Sean Bean to Thomas Koch as well. Um, I mean, it's just like literally a who's who of acting great. So what was the atmosphere like? Did you ever get intimidated by meeting any of these incredible names? I can just say that Thomas Cott and John I can confirm is the, the loveliest and the <laughs> most the funniest guy on the earth. So amazing. <laughs> filming with him was so f much fun. <laughs> really? Anybody else? Yeah, I think learning that Sean Bean was going to be playing my dad was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what is that like? <laughs> yeah, mental. Because we kind of, there was whispers of it before, w when we got the parts, it was like, who's going to be daddy? And we didn't know. And then, um, yeah, when it was confirmed it was Sean, I was very shocked because I've like looked up to him for many years and all his different parts, he can do so much. But yeah, the first day, like Sean and Leslie, who I was lucky to work with both of them, and they're both such generous actors and very humble and down to earth and very very kind sit with us in the green room have a laugh like chilled out it just made the job yeah easy we were i think the nerves faded leslie is so mean in leslie this show manville. leslie yeah. manville in the show she plays <laughs> rabina chase and she's honestly awful she's horrible. and she's <laughs> such a like a cruel cold <laughs> malicious mean mother and it was very surreal having <laughs> being served all of this like cold harsh yeah, horrible parenting. <laughs> and then camera's cut and she turns into the sweetest person <laughs> you could ever meet. And, I, and I, I reminded myself that that is actually technically what acting is. <laughs> uh, it shouldn't have been such a surprise, but she, uh, I think all of them, and as, as Julia says, Sean was like that and, and, and Helen as well, who is, is such, 
I mean, an unbelievable actor and has so much, you know, history and, and profile and work behind her. And, yeah. And Helen Hunt is amazing. She is amazing. Yeah. Tour de force in, in the show and in real life. Uh, but she was great and she, you know, like like everyone should, but she, she treated you as your, uh, you know, as her equal mm -hmm. and wanted to get to know you and wanted to connect with you. Uh, so she made it really easy. Also, you have some incredible directors on this as well, which is so in TV series, you do get to work with a mix of directors. So did that mean that you each had different styles that altered your performances or how did that work? <laughs> It was really cool, actually, having the, the, the difference between, because they bring out different parts of you. And, and yeah, just to see, to see how it differs in, in, in the different episodes and mm -hmm. to, to, to feel your character in a different way. It's, I, I really found it like really kind of exhilarating to have that, that difference there. There was like, because if, if each director brings about like a different, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be me <laughs> trying to direct. <laughs> <laughs> Not very well. Yeah, if there's any Take bad the moments, in it, it's probably me. If there's, um, yeah, uh, the, you know, there are different emo emotional chapters through the story, mm. and and I think having different directors captured that because they bring their own process and mm. and breathe new life into it, and they all have their own yeah th their own style, which makes for I guess a richer story because it's not i mean you know i can see that there are plus sides to having a you know one director and maybe having one vision but actually um i think they spoke they were in contact all the time they had a unified kind of look and, mm -hmm. a, and, and vision for how it should be uh and working with a variety of different ones it was just good learning curve you know yeah. as all of us are young actors and and working with people who have yeah very different styles very different processes and finding what works for us what doesn't work for us it was a really good education I mean, it must be, there are some incredibly tense scenes as well that you end up having to film. So what do you do to like decompress on set to sort of just break that mood a little bit? Um, I know with Adam Smith, he's really good at playing music. Yeah. Nice. So he would, if he had to rile us up, sometimes like not the quite right track and I'd, I'd say to him, Adam, no, Mainly reggae. Not gonna work for me. <laughs> that's not I had heavy metal at one point. Drama. Um, yeah, but I think we work with such a lovely crew um, for me in Manchester, for you guys in Prague as well. And they having all those friendly faces every day, you could kind of walk away from intense scene and have a giggle with someone. And yeah, yeah I think just being surrounded by a fantastic crew. But also, it was very important that Adam, before even before shooting in Prague, because we started shooting in Prague, uh, he it, like we we could rehearse, but also we had time to really bond and to connect. So then on set, you know, you know, when we had intense scene, we could really like make jokes and really f f you've we felt so safe with each other yeah. so that was really important for us actors i think um and finally so many films and dramas are set during the world wars so other than the epic casting what do you think really makes world on fire stand out because it does i think the the undersides of of, of human nature and the the sides that are surprising about people, mm -hmm. uh, I think there's like a lot of like light and and, and like shade in mm -hmm. it, and it's 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 really yeah, it just keeps you on your toes. But obviously, also the stories, like the, the, the so many stories, like like Jonah said at the beginning, so many nationalities. You know, yeah. we, we have the German family couple in Paris, uh, family in Poland and in in England. You know, so it's. Um, it's amazing that it shows it's from all those different perspectives. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's completely tuning into the emotions of the people and they're ordinary people rather than trying to be he heroic yeah. or yeah. it's not a history lesson. And I think that's really important for people also of our generation to reconnect because um, it really wasn't that long ago, but sometimes it's easy to put it aside as the, to think the olden times yeah. bec because it's in history books. And so to actually have people that you can say, oh, that's a love story that's quite similar to something I'm going through or yeah, and you can connect to these characters. Absolutely. Um, sadly, that is all that we have time for with uh, the World on Fire cast, but it continues on Sunday nights at 9pm at BBC One. Do catch up with episode one on iPlayer now if you haven't seen it. We're back tomorrow with Max and Harvey, contestants on Celebrity X Factor and The Darkness. But for now, one last time for the cast of World on Fire. Thank you so much. Thank you.